What is up my fellow gamers? In today's video, we got our best beginner's guide for the brand new global launch mobile game, Sea of Conquest, Pirate War. Like and sub for more amazing gaming content. This one, man. This one caught me by surprise. I don't know how I missed this. It came out a couple of weeks ago, the beginning of January. And I completely just, this went right off my radar. This is a really good game though, really fun game. And we're gonna click on our avatar in the top left. We're gonna go to our settings. Then we are going to go to where it says redeem gifts. Now, if you don't see redeem gifts, there is also a website where you can go ahead and enter your gift codes. I think that's for iOS. So if you're on iOS device and maybe you just don't see this redeem gifts code, I'll have a link down below in the description box where you can go ahead, click that link and it'll take you to the website. To go ahead and enter your gift codes. First code is gonna be all capital letters, C of Conquest. The next one is gonna be SOC777. This is the exclusive one for going ahead and downloading the Windows version on your PC to go ahead and play this game. And the last one, all capital letters, ME Booty, me booty. All right, now I wanna go over a few things that I was completely confused about because the game's a little bit complicated for new players. You're gonna be kind of confused on certain aspects of how this game works. Now, the first most important thing you need to take in mind is in the top left corner, right next to our power icon, right here we got 800K power. We've got some additional things that we need to look at. We have our morale, which is extremely important. Morale affects the productivity of the ship's cabin and the ship's sailing speed. When your morale fails to zero, you actually start to lose sailors. So your troops basically just start jumping ship. They don't wanna be a part of your crew anymore. So here's our morale breakdown. We have the different percentages, the efficiency and our speed when we're traveling. Next to that though, and this is what's really important, these are our supplies. Now the way the supplies work is anytime we are not docked, at one of these areas. So right now I am docked, actually I'm, I'm leaving the dock right now. So I'm going out into the sea, but when we are not at a dock, we start to lose supplies. So we are consuming supplies every time we are not docked. You'll see our remaining supplies is right there. That's our number. And you can see it kind of ticking down every couple of seconds. You'll see the consumption per minute is 97.30. Sustainability basically means how long we can last out here away from a dock for our remaining supplies hit zero and then it starts to negatively affect our morale. So we always wanna have supplies. You'll even see it says our supplies have a low cost right now. Down below that well, we have auto resupply, have dish and drinks. So when you're going ahead and we are building out our base right here, this is our ship. Uh, it's a base building war game, but they did it a little bit different with like building. You're kind of building different rooms uh, on your ship, but you have the ability to go ahead and start to create dishes, which is cook. Anytime we go ahead and we use some of these ingredients, we can cook food and then we can use that food to go ahead and replenish our supplies whenever we're out in the sea traveling around and we need to go ahead and resupply. So having this checked off is always a good idea. This is just gonna auto resupply so you don't have to really worry too much about constantly having to check this or hit the plus icon to go ahead and add stuff. You'll see we can also replenish supplies from the docks at a nearby port or our food backpack. The food backpack was what I just mentioned where we're going ahead and we're just creating dishes and having this auto set will auto consume them. How do we resupply and also how do we increase our overall maximum supply? Because you can do that as well. So first thing we need to do is we gotta go to a dock. So anytime you see this little anchor thing and it says enter, there's a bunch of them. If we scroll all the way out, See these little anchors, these are kind of like the little city ports that you can go ahead and you can dock at and they're little islands and you can visit them and they'll have different things going on. All right, so now that we have docked, we will not lose any supplies. Supplies right now says no consumption because we're not out at the sea. Sustainability is now infinite because we're not losing any supplies. From here, we then have our trading venue and our governor. Now, if we go ahead and we click where it says depart, this is gonna take us to the docks. Now this is going to show us where we can heal our troops, heal our crew members, if they do happen to get injured from battles, and we can also replenish. So if we click this little heal icon, 
This is going to heal us, but we currently have no wounded troops. At the top, this is our supplies. Right now, we got 1,304 supplies. We can hold a maximum of 3,000. When you first start off, your maximum is only going to show you 1,000. Use this bar and scroll up. That's it. See how I'm scrolling up? You can do this manually, depending on how many supplies you want, or you can just click the max icon. Maxing it's going to give you the maximum amount of crew members as well as the maximum amount of supplies. Now, it does cost you your gold coins right here. These gold, it does cost that. It's not a lot, really, depending on how much you need to go ahead and resupply. If we go ahead and we take this away, like the troops, you'll see that for the actual supplies, it's only costing us seven gold. So it's really not that much, but that's how you go ahead and you can resupply. Just go to any docks, click where it says depart, and then just use your scroll icon and then pay the gold coins and then you'll get that. Now, the next thing is how do we increase our supplies? So when we are at a dock, we have to, we have to dock first, then we are going to access our cabin right here. And then I just want you to go ahead and find one of your storage units. So this one right here, we got a storage level three unit. Now, hand in hand storage buildings are extremely important. Make sure you have as many as you can and make sure they are always at the maximum level. From there, we have our storage icon. So we're gonna click this storage button and this is where we can go ahead and we can start to modify this. The, our goods right here is showing zero out of 20. Goods is how much kind of goods that you can kind of get from like when you're going out and finding hidden treasure from your uh, treasure chest, from your treasure maps, or if you're attacking other players, you can steal some of their cargo, some of the items that they may have. There's a lot of different like goods and you need to go ahead and sell the goods at those different cities in order to exchange them for gold, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. But we also have our plunder protection right here, 30%. So if you are holding a bunch of goods, you can get plundered. Another live player can attack you and steal those items and then go and sell them for gold. But right here we have supplies. You'll see that we have 1304 out of 3000. From here, we need to click where it says modify. Now modify is what lets us go ahead and increase our overall supplies. However, what it's doing is it's reducing the amount of goods we can hold. So it is a trade-off. So if we take a look at this bottom, we have a scroll bar. Now this scroll bar is gonna determine the difference whether we wanna be able to carry more goods or we wanna be able to have more overall supplies. As I scroll this, you're going to see the numbers change. Our goods are going down from here. It's only zero out of six. So we can only hold six things. That's really bad. We can only loot six different items. And then you're gonna constantly have to go back and forth between the docks and then selling the items. You really don't wanna do that, but our supplies is gonna be ridiculously high. If we scroll it all the way to the right, we now have our goods at 21 and our supplies are only at two of two. From there, if we click render, this will go ahead and make the change. Our overall supplies have now changed and went down to 2,000 instead of 3,000 like they were before. In our goods, we can now hold 21 different good items. So really there isn't a reason to overall increase your maximum uh, supplies because you can just go ahead and use your dish and drinks to constantly replenish this. You always, 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 I can't stress it enough, wanna have the highest amount of goods available for your inventory because you never want to get to the point where you're going and you're doing a treasure chest map and you find a bunch of treasure and then you can't even carry it all because you're maxed out already in your inventory space for the amount of goods you can hold and then you're just constantly going back and forth back and forth it's really annoying it leaves you more susceptible to being attacked by other live players you really don't want that so my number one suggestion would be you really don't need to increase your supplies that much. Just go ahead and ha use your auto consumption for your resupply and just do it that way. Uh, now a way to make a lot of gold fast is gonna be through auto trading. And it's also gonna increase your overall relations with the different trading venues, the governors of these islands. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're at a spot now and we have our governor right here. Now this is the city of Slaughter, our affiliated gang. It says none, building levels, level two. We have a 2% trade tax. Now you can go ahead and you can donate your gold coins to go ahead and increase your prosperity with them. This is really not the most efficient way to do this though. The most efficient way is gonna be through the trading venue. And you can also do it though another way. If we click right here, we have trade with guilds to improve our relations with them. We can also complete commissions to improve our relations with the guilds. So occasionally you're gonna have some like missions that are gonna pop up, come into the trading venue and all you do is go ahead and trade those goods for the gold coins. Now the auto trade is a really awesome thing that you can do and it's great for when you are not actually playing. It's something new you can do when you're going to sleep, when you're gonna be away from the game for a while because this continues to run while you aren't logged in and into the game. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click auto trade and what auto trade does is it's going to go ahead and set up a trade between two islands. And essentially what it's auto doing is it's sending you to one island and buying up these goods. These are just uncommon goods. You're gonna buy these, then you're gonna go to another island and you're gonna sell those goods at the other island and you're just constantly doing a bunch of trading back and forth. So let's go ahead and you can see it kind of in action. And it says tap to select the destination port for an auto trade that has the little icon right there. And that is going to set up my trading port. So let's go to uh, the Phoenix Bay. We'll click on this one and it'll say set as a target. This has sweet potatoes uncommon and it has the little arrow pointing up. So the sweet potatoes are gonna make us a ton of gold. We're gonna click set as target. It's gonna show us right here, our auto trade time is 50. We can change this if we want. We have our estimated acquisition. So it's looking like we're gonna make about 55,000 gold. And then we can click start auto trade. And then we also have end auto trade if defeated. Now this is important because you gotta be careful while you're doing this, other live players can attack you. They can steal your resources. They can mess up your trade route. So it's very important that you just kind of take consideration in that. If you do not have this selected, this end auto trade, basically what's gonna happen <coughs> is you're gonna go to a port, you're gonna buy a bunch of the resources, then you're gonna go to the other port to sell it, and you could get attacked and looted, and then you're gonna go to the other port waste more gold, buy more resources, and then it's gonna keep going back and forth. And essentially you're just spending gold to buy resources, but then you're getting constantly looted, so you're not actually getting any value. And if anything, you're kind of giving other people free resources. So just be careful with this. So we're gonna click start auto trade, and it went ahead and it bought all the stuff from this area. So you'll see right here in this bottom left corner, right. Uh, right there where it says 23 out of 23. This is our inventory storage. So we bought all of these up, it auto did that. And what it's doing is it's taking us to that other port, auto doing it. So we're gonna go all the way here. And once we get to the Phoenix Bay, this is gonna come here, it's gonna auto sell all of these goods that we have bought from the other place. And then once we get here at the Phoenix Bay, it's gonna buy up everything that it can from the trade venue here. And it's then gonna take all the goods that we bought from the Phoenix Bay back to the other port and it's gonna sell them there. So you're buying from one area and selling at the other, buying from this and then, you know, it's a back and forth thing. And it's gonna last us, you know, you could do it for three hours, make a ton of gold, or you can just click the X icon and it will just immediately stop your progression as well. But like I said, just be careful because you do become kind of a sitting duck from other live players to just steal your resources from you. Aside from that, that's like the most basic thing that you're gonna be doing early, early game. Aside from going ahead and doing some missions, we have a bunch of different heroes that I already have. The other thing that I just also wanna mention is when you are going ahead and you are building out your uh, formation for your ships, just make sure you're matching the correct heroes with the correct spots that they are in. So this first icon right here, this is your captain. It has the little captain icon. Make sure you're going ahead and you're using an actual hero who is a captain. 
The heroes have different things that they're good at. If we click right here, this will show us all of our captain heroes that we have. And then if we go back, this second one right here, this is going to show us our first mate. So you wanna have a hero who specifically is good at being a first mate. If we click this icon, it's gonna show us all of our first mate heroes. We have these three. So those ones you wanna put in that specific spot. And then our last one we have is our gunner. Make sure you go ahead and you're using a gunner character in that gunner spot because they do get bonuses. You really have to pay attention to this at the top. It'll show you first mate, this guy right here is also a first mate. This guy is a gunner. And it'll show you the little thumbs up icon too for easy access. And you'll see we're getting an all attributes of plus 20% when we go ahead and have them in the correct spot. So you really wanna make sure you're putting them in the right spots for your ships when you're going ahead and just setting them up. That is it for right now. I hope you guys and girls enjoyed the video. Stay happy, stay safe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.